good to be here. Uh, and I'm already getting, uh, you know, a lot of, uh, a lot of, a lot of early. This could be the best Circles Off episode we've ever we, that's ever been done. Come on, let's go. Welcome to Circles Off, episode number 142, right here, part of the Hammer Betting Network, and presented by Pinnacle Sportsbook. I'm Rob Pizzola. Johnny from Betstamp off this week. We set up the dummy in his chair again in his honor. Makes me feel a little bit more comfortable in studio knowing that fake Johnny is beside me. Uh, I'm back from vacation. I'm going to be honest, Zach, it's depressing being back from vacation. Yeah, the text that we were getting about like having drinks out on the beach in the warm weather and we had a snowstorm here. We had the coldest days that we've had so far of the winter here in Toronto dark rain i had fire alarms in my building i I, i'm usually envious of situations like that i was just mad at you uh you know what it's nice to get away nice to dodge the cold weather uh but back to reality as it is right now episode 42 there's somebody we're gonna have a tweet that trigger us in today's episode it's making a resurgence uh while i was away i actually avoided checking my phone as much as possible when I was out by the pool and on the beach, didn't really have it on me a lot of the times, but I got back, went through a bunch of DMs. There's lots of requests to bring back tweets that trigger us. And because of the guests that we have on today, it's a perfect time to bring it back. So we'll do that later. But there's one person that likes to complain a lot about the athlete number segments. I'll get to that a little bit later on. It's not going away. Not, not yet, at least. Are you fucking kidding me? In the words of GRP, like, what's your problem? <laughs> Paraphrased. 42, obviously, Jackie Robinson immediately comes to mind. Also, Mariana Rivera. I'd love to play Enter Sandman on the show, but we would not be able to monetize anymore. Another depressing thing. I grew up a huge Metallica fan. They had, like, the whole thing with Napster. Like, don't steal music and whatever. It kind of sucks that I, that had to happen. Like, my favorite band was the face of that. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I love Metallica and their music, but, and I get it. They want it to be compensated, but. Yeah. That was, that was tough. You know any 42s? Uh, well, Tyler Bozak, yeah. but like, that's a yeah. Leafs, <laughs> that's a Leafs specific one. O- outside of that, I mean, you said the other ones. I was going to say, though, quickly, the Enter Sandman. Have you seen that? Uh, I think it's Virginia Tech football. They do the oh, entrance, yeah. and yeah. then the whole stadium is jumping up and down. One of the coolest entrances in all of sports, I think. Uh, col- college sports, especially college football games, yep. there's um, there's not really any comparison. No. I've been to about a handful in my life, and uh, they just kind of blow every other live sporting event out of the water. Yeah, It's just not even close. No, Especially when you get the, the rivalries between fans as well. Yeah. Well, I would say that U.S. college sports... Um, it's not even close to what we get here in Canada for college sports. It's far and away the best. Rob, you know what else is the best? Far and away. I, l- I like that you set me up there because I had nowhere, no, no idea of where I was going to go for this one. But Pinnacle is, of course, the best. The world's greatest sports book available to bettors across Canada. Find out what pro bettors have known for the past 25 years. Pinnacle is where the best bettors play. I bet on sports for a living for a while now. I would never consider not having Pinnacle as one of my sports books. Everyday competitive odds, great sports book offering, great customer service, easy to deposit. Everything you would want in a sports book, Pinnacle has it. So make sure you check them out. If you are in Canada, use code HAMMER to sign up. It does help support us here on Circles Off and the Hammer Betting Network. And of course, you must be 19 plus, not available in the US. And as always, excuse me, please play responsibly. Can't preach that enough. Now, um, don't want to get too heavy with things in the early going here. Uh, we have a, a pretty jam-packed episode with a friend of mine, a uh, very polarizing <laughs> individual coming up here very shortly. Uh, but before we get into that, while I was away on vacation, uh, I somehow got set to the For You tab instead of the following tab on Twitter. Uh, more on that later when we do tweets that trigger us because I saw a lot of stuff that, oh my God, can't even believe what I, some of the things I saw. Yeah. But I came across someone named Troy Hermo, at Troy Hermo on Twitter, a sports gambling analyst for B- BR Betting, Leisure Report Betting. I'd never heard of Troy before. He's born in 1994, eight years younger than me. 2018, he's diagnosed with stage four adrenal cancer, eight and a half pound tumor on his adrenal ga- uh, gland, the size of a Christmas ham. It needed to be removed immediately. 
had a 12 hour surgery, tumors removed, along with his adrenal gland, his spleen, his kidney. Nine months later, another small spot shows up. He has to go under radiation therapy. Three months later, a tumor on his liver. Extreme chemo for that. Nine months later, tumors in his lungs, immunotherapy. 12 months later, a tumor on his spine, his other adrenal gland and his lymph lymph nodes. So far for that, no treatments have been successful. So he's entered himself into the clinical trial system. So for the last year and a half, he's been battling cancer and it's a very rare form of cancer. Basically, his doctor told him there's nothing more that she could offer. He reached out to MD Anderson. It's the number one cancer center in the United States. And they have a trial for him. And they have special specialists, excuse me, who understand his illness. Troy's Las Vegas based. The trial is in Houston. He started a GoFundMe to pay for his medical expenses, his bills, cover the cost of his airfare, his ride shares, food, lodging. He set a goal for 20K. He's almost there. He's just over 19,000. I know that the community of people here that watch and listen to Circles Off, we skew closer to pro betters, semi pro betters, uh, rather than recreationals. Let's do what we can to give Troy a chance at beating his illness. So we're going to post the GoFundMe link in the description below. It's up on screen right now as well. If you're willing to support the cause, please do so. Let's get Troy over the 20K because we can. Humans helping humans. Also want to take a moment to send out some positive vibes to another fellow better in the community, Las Vegas Chris, who appeared here on Circles Off for episode number 118 in September of last year. He recently announced as well that he's battling cancer. Now, I know Las Vegas Chris can be a polarizing figure uh, in the betting world due to his pick selling. Let's put that aside for a moment. In my interactions with Chris, which I've had several, he's been very genuine, he's been down to earth, he's been very friendly. Regardless of your opinion on his business or his betting approach or whatever, Let's unite in sending him our best wishes and give him some strength during this challenging time. He recorded a very long video. I watched the whole thing. It was over an hour of what he's going through right now. But it's just a reminder to everyone, life is very unpredictable and we should live each day to its fullest. So whether you're betting on sports or you're simply navigating the ups and downs of life, appreciate the moments that you have, spread positivity wherever you go. I I can take a lot of advice from what I just said. Often I'm focused on the negative. Let's try to be a little bit more positive. Las Vegas Chris, I know you listen to a lot of the episodes. If you're listening now, know that the entire betting community is rooting for you. Stay strong. Keep fighting. Know that you have our support here as well at Circles Off. Here's to beating the odds both on and off the field. Hopefully you have a speedy recovery and brighter days ahead. Uh, If everyone can join me in uh, wishing Las Vegas Chris um, well, keep him in your prayers. Uh, That would be very much appreciated. All right. Wow, this is like the biggest 180 in the history. There was like one time where we had G-Stack George in studio where he was doing like his plus EV moment. He's like, I almost started crying. And then I said the stupidest thing. Yeah, you had to follow that up. That that was like, that was rough. Yeah. But we're going from that to this. Joining us this week on Circles Off is a regular here on the Hammer Betting Network. You can find him over on the Hit the Books channel here on YouTube, where he does a weekly show with Brad Powers during the college football season and mixes in some shows sporadically during the off season like we did this week. You can follow him on Twitter at Joey Kanish 22 22 for the amount of times that he has changed his nickname in the past before, whether it was uh, Joey Card Counter, Joey Insider, Joey Scoops, there was Joey Pucks, uh, Joey Canucks, Joey Canuck, Santa Kanish, uh, Joey Canada at one point. I think Joey Buckeye is a joke. There's been a lot of Joeys, but it's Joey Kanish making his second appearance on Circles Off. Kanish, how are things? You know, it, it feels good to be where I belong in the host chair now. Uh, you know, I, I, I didn't want to, you know, I didn't know at, when I put the final nail in Johnny's coffin, but. Um, this feels like the time, um, so 
good to be here. Uh, and I'm already getting, uh, you know, a lot of, a uh, lot of, a lot of early, this could be the best circles off episode we've ever, we, that's ever been done. So took 142 episodes to finally, uh, land on a, on a superstar co-host, but the, the check cleared and happy, to, happy to be here. Yeah, well, we'll we'll see about that. There's a new BetPod ratings account now that's run by Hagrid. I'm uh, well, yeah, I, and it's it's yes, I, I shit, one of the best BetPod ratings in circles off history, mind you. The Joey Kanish, uh, uh with uh, with George Boy over there. Um, so so let's let's you know let's keep that. We we got to keep that standard up. Georgie boy, G Stack George. I assume you're referring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The 90 Degrees episode that you did that got a good rating. That one. Six out of ten, which was like a <laughs> nine out of ten on 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 that scale. It's true. That was a tough rating scale for a six out of ten. That that is basically a nine out of ten anywhere else. But yeah, Hagrin so far decent ratings for the the Mister Limited and uh, Porter episodes. I think we got a four and a half out of ten for the Super Bowl recap. Oh well, it is what it is. Okay, they're yeah. not all going to be winners. No, no, you can't you can't all be tens or six out of tens. Yes. Uh, Kanish, uh, you've appeared previously on Circles Off, although that was a long time ago. It's like when we were, I don't think, I don't think you've done a video episode yet. No, I think they, it was like, what, one of the first 10 or 15 you guys did? Yeah. I, I don't know why we picked one of you as the first, you I, as you saw, the first 10 or 15. You started off 50. with the heavy hitters, so that, that makes a lot of sense. And well, I, know, I know we're doing tweets that trigger us, but in terms of segments that trigger us, I, I was waiting for Zach to, you know, Ask me about Guy Lafleur, number number eighty nine, back in <laughs> okay. uh, you know nineteen oh two or whatever. You know, we had the, the first twenty minutes we usually spend on uh, you know what 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 number some Canadian hockey player has been dead for thirty years is. So we already pre recorded that segment without you because we didn't want. <laughs> thank, we didn't want uh, your part. thank you for my. That's yes, that was that was a great call by the production team. It was going to be in our tweets at Trigger. So the, let, let's go right to that. The second last tweet, Zach, if we have it from Rex Jones. So Kanish points out yesterday he's going to be recording with us today. Uh, As long as you pointlessly talk about jersey numbers of players nobody cares about for the first 20 minutes, it will be a great show. I I have I don't know why I do this. This is like wasting time, but I have to defend this. So I meticulously plan these podcasts. So not like everything we're going to say, but the segments. As soon as I see people jump the shark in the first five minutes, We'll stop doing it. But you know what is our highest retention rate of the entire podcast is the jersey numbers part. I don't know who likes it. I have no idea. But there's people, the first comments we get every week are people are just pointing out numbers that we missed. Like it drives the the most engagement that we do of anything on this entire channel. I, I think you're either like a number, like a jersey numbers guy and you're a guy like all where like you remember like and when you're six years old, number 20, or, or, you're, or you're not like, I'm telling you, like I've been a you know, Lions, Michigan fan. I couldn't tell you from this past season for a million dollars a player who wore what number. Like I have zero recollection of any number. Like it never centers a man, and that could be due to some other, you know, mental challenges that uh, Joey K, you know, deals with on a regular basis. But at the same time, like it was never a thing. Whereas, like you got, or so there's some obviously some people out there that like. They remember they number they could they could rail off the you know every player on the the sixty two Canadians or something and and all their numbers and they love it so yeah I'm I'm sure there's there's a lot of people out there that uh, that they that's their thing I uh, I know J J McCarthy wore nine because I watched uh, I couldn't have told you that for nine million but. O's O's the mentalist whatever his name is O's Perlman when he did the did you ever see that when he was in the Michigan locker room. You know I did talking? see that. Yes. And he asked Coach Harbaugh to pick out like a bunch of random players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He took their jersey numbers, flipped them upside down. It spelled gold blue. I don't know how any of this stuff happens. I like is it fall o? Off my is, I thought it was Oz. It's O's? O's. O's. It was oh. spelt Oz, but he, it goes, he goes by O's, yes. Okay. Inter- yes. Interesting. I did see that. But I again, that, it was one of those things that, you know, I'm not super uh, – engaged in for for you know like uh you know, like oh the guy's gonna you know, throw around the numbers it's like and barely uh you know yeah. do, the, do my figures every week i got basic it. edition <laughs> that doesn't doesn't surprise me doesn't yeah. surprise me um about 75 percent of our audience comes through youtube uh not through gambling twitter so there's gonna be a bunch of people watching this for the first time who have actually no idea who you are so let's uh let's skip like the whole life story and full background but but what do you do for betting uh, what's your role in, in the betting ecosystem? Yeah, I would say these days, um, you know, I used to in the early days originate some college football, still still 
kind of have that like uh, college football passion and, you know, get into the numbers and stuff. But for the most part would be what you call, a, you know, a mover. And I'm sure you got you guys have outlined in some episodes and had different people on that that kind of fit that space. Uh, but it's mostly sitting down uh, for originators in the space. So I definitely likely lean more towards, um, you know, like like some of the smaller markets with higher RI, more edges. But um, it, it's pretty much mostly morphed into kind of a year round helping people get down, uh, whether that be on PPH accounts or legals or, or offshore or wherever. Um, and so that, that, and it's funny, like the, the industry has, has changed quite a bit in the last few years. So some things that, you know, might've been harder to get down on or were more liquid are now different. Um, I tell you what, I used to do a ton more props. Like, like back in the, I used to do, you know, a few years ago was super prop heavy. And now, now, not as much for a number of factors. So, uh, yeah, it's always changing, always adapting. But uh, the, the, the short version would be uh, most for the most part a mover for for some smaller uh, smaller markets that are out there. So Johnny's away traveling this week, and uh, I wanted to have you on for for one reason in particular. But there's been a lot of questions we've gotten recently on the pod, um, whether that's through our community forum at the Hammer Bet forward slash the Nails, through our DMs here on Circles Off, our at mentions, emails, or whatever that are related to. Uh, kiosk betting, in-person betting. Uh, I don't have very much experience in that at all. I know Johnny doesn't have very much experience in that at all. So wanted to get you on uh, to just have a, a quick segment on it and specifically uh, the pros and cons to kiosk betting, what it is, how to you know stay under the radar, all sorts of things like that. But before we get into that, uh, most people should, should know, but for those that don't, uh, describe the differences between, I mean, what's traditional betting online versus in-person betting and specifically like what a kiosk would be. Yeah. So, I mean, kiosk is basically if you take the app and you, you put the software on, a, you know, a computer that'd be right in front of you at the sports book uh, where you can just same as a slot machine. You, you insert the the money in or your winning ticket in, you put a balance in and you're able to, you know, you know, hit, hit a few buttons and get the same bet you would on an app. Uh, now, as the benefits for um, some some people that, you know, um, and as we've seen, risk management on these apps now is significantly better than it was even a few years ago. And I know you've been, uh, you know, consulting with a number of people. It's just it's a lot harder now uh, to, to what you would call beard or, or keep active, even even doing some of the account management stuff. Um it's just it's just a lot better, and that's kind of the you know the life cycle of uh, whatever a company. Their the risk management's better, so a lot of people, myself included, turn to the kiosk to be able to get more down. Uh, it gives you also a level of anonymity if you're not inserting your you know players card in there that they might not know you know who who exactly it is, uh, even though they do have some ways to to find out as I've learned. But uh, <laughs> so it's just usually a way to uh, to either you know. It, we go I, I, one great line, and I'll give give him the credit that Jeff Davis, who works at Circa, uh, told me about kiosk betters. It's the squarest of the square and the sharpest of the sharp. Like those, those are the people. You usually, if you're going to a kiosk, you're either you know betting five bucks because you want to degen and watch it there on an SGP, and you're in the book all day, or you're going there as a sharp trying to get more down uh, on some plus EV plays. So that I think is kind of the 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 best way I've heard kiosk betting described. It's sad that I don't know which one you fall into out of, <laughs> out of those. <laughs> it depends on the day. It really, yeah, well, it depends what I'm going down there for. All right. So uh, let, let, let's talk it through. So you're a mover, right? Um, typically speaking, I, I mean, we've seen the YouTube videos of, of you going to different casinos, uh, sometimes crossing the border into Canada to place <laughs> bets and, and all sorts of stuff like that. Typically, why would you choose to make that trip out to a, a casino to place those bets rather than getting them through online accounts? Yeah, I mean, the short answer is to obviously get more down than you could on the app. Um, and as as a mover, my, my value now in the ecosystem is to be, to, to get more down than what an origin cater like. So this is why it's like for NFL play, for the most part, unless it's a look at or something, you, you don't need Joey K for the money. You know, you, you don't need somebody like me to get that. If it's uh lacrosse or you know college baseball or something where you're, you would be you know by yourself as an individual might be able to get down peanuts um whereas you, you know if i go down and uh, hit a couple of kiosks at a few different locations then then can you know get maybe 5x 10x what what a person could have gotten uh, on their own 
or on a PPH or even on an app or one of those things. So it it'll just allows you. It's mostly liquidity. Um, the other part would be, you know, the, the anonymity of not burning. Whereas, like, if I don't, may, maybe I have good stuff, but it's it, it's you know, all player props or something. If you put that into an app. Most of these places nowadays know that, you know, you might submit 10, some of these places, 10, 12 bets. If they're all, you know, player props that are getting you some CLV or winning, you're probably not going to have much longevity there. Whereas if you do it anonymously on a kiosk, that, that kind of gives you a, a longer leash. Now it, it, it's a lot, there, there's their own level of challenges mixed in where you have to physically go. There are some overheads in the fact that you're, you know, you're going across the board. There's some time constraints where, you know, if you need to get down some real quick, if, if you don't have somebody standing right there. Um, so there, there's some logistics behind it that make it difficult. But, yeah, I've probably spent uh, a little too much of my my life in the last five years uh, in, in front of a kiosk screen, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, I get it. Um, a few more questions on that, because actually this is interesting to me. I Again, I don't. This is not, I'm, I'm foreign to this space. The only kiosk betting I've ever done in Ontario was pre-regulation, which would be, just be like betting at your local convenience store. You know, the ProLine stuff and stuff like that. But um, how sophisticated are the kiosks? So what, what I mean by that is like, you're placing a bet online with an online sports book. The vast majority of them aren't even going to tell you what your limit is on the bet. You're just going to find out once you place the bet whether or not that's within what they're willing to take on it or not, with the exception of Pinnacle Sportsbook, which you should bet at, by the way, because they tell you exactly how much you can get down on everything. At the kiosk, do you know what your max limit is on a bet, or are you going through the same process that you're going through on an online book where you're kind of just doing trial and error? You're not going to know, especially if you're first trying it out. Like you're, It's more of a learned um, what it probably is going to be. Um, so for the most part, you're, you're not going to like, there's not going to be a, uh, most play like a max bet button or any of that. I, you usually, you know, you kind of try it and then you see what, what the limit is. You can get, and you retain that information in terms of, you know, what you would go because some pl places with the better risk management can see a rejected amount. So like if you have a trader that's, um, I'll, you know, I'll just say, I'll give them one credit. FanDuel is one that has their risk managers watching kiosk betting. So uh, you don't, you don't want to have a, a rejected bet because that usually gets somebody's, uh, somebody's eyes on it in, in terms of then um, seeing what's going on. That key. Now, not every place is like that, but uh, the other thing is all of them, and this is going to depend on state and have a max amount you can deposit into the kiosk for, Michigan, it's between twenty four hundred and twenty nine ninety nine in terms of like so you can't put more than three thousand dollars cash into a kiosk during one session. So you'd have to do it, make your bets, end the session, start a new session um, to get it in or that. So you kind of be able to calculate over time depending on what the market is, what they usually take how fast I can turn it around because some places might, you know, a couple of kiosk hits, they might move it right away. Some places you might get it a few in. So there's a lot of um, what you would call like you know, a tactical knowledge. That's not going to be, you know, ready or available that, that helps you get uh, more efficient at it or more experience. And you're basically just learning this through experience. Like there was no exactly. guidebook for you yeah. beforehand. Yeah. And it's going to be different too. Like, the, even if, if I ask somebody in New Jersey or Louisiana or Mississippi, they might not have the same experience, even at the same book and the same limit. So it's really got to be, uh, you know, your own learning experience. And, you, you know, I'll communicate with guys that are in different areas. Um, but in a lot of like some states don't even offer the same markets as the other one. So, yeah, a lot, most of my knowledge was was learned through trial and error. All right, you're gonna have to deal with some idiotic questions for me for a second here, but yeah, you no, mentioned keep, keep it rolling. I, yeah, I'm you, used to that. That's no different than our normal conversation. I, I, I put it up, I teed it up for you. I, there, I, I knew it was coming. Um, <laughs> the anonymous betting, which you mentioned off the top, right? So I'm assuming that in some cases you don't have to put in a player's card or anything. You can just go up, put cash in the kiosk, place your bets, right? Let's say you get limited, um, or you know what the limit is on a specific bet. What is stopping you from just creating a new session on that key? Like, are there preventative measures within the kiosk itself where, like, what if the next person wanted to play the same bet as you? Like, can you just take cash out, put cash back into a machine and play the same bet again? How does that go? So you can, um, for the most part, 
It depends on the shop. Like different shops have different risk management tactics. Uh, and some of it is like a, a certain number of bets uh, triggers like a trader review where if the same bet gets hit two, three times in a row, then it gets sent to the – it lowers the stake factor down to like 10% of what it normally is even on the kiosk, and a trader has to review it. Other places, they actually have like – act as I mentioned, FanDuel is one place that has traders actively monitoring their kiosk, and they'll uh, you know contact somebody at, the, at that – working at the book to come then say you know hey uh you can't you can't put any more on that or any of that that type of thing um so it's different per book but most of them that i've used have some form of uh risk management baked in now there are a couple um shops that i would say maybe the kiosks that i've been to that are lesser known like operators that might not have anything baked in and so if you you post something bad you could you could have a real bad day uh a real good day for joey k a real bad day if you're if you're working at that operator but those are um usually the smaller you know casinos or the operators that people aren't as familiar with you know your your standard um big name brands in the u.s have the risk management kind of baked into the kiosk now in some form a couple of the smaller places, uh, you know, that, that you can still find some gems that might be a little bit more, you know, uh, exposed. Would there ever be a reason that you would uh, actually place the bet, like using your real identity, like using a player's card? Or like, is there a reason for you to do that in any capacity, whether it's like rewards points or whatever? Is that ever big enough to offset just like going and hitting these machines as, as anonymously as possible? You know, not not for me anymore. I will say there are times if I, if, uh, you know, everybody, I'm sure there'll be some people that want tricks of the trade. One that I've used before is if I have, and I, and I like this one because it, um, I, it, I don't know, it just makes, you know, it you feel you get some revenge. If you've got a really limited account, that but that might move a number on the app, you can I so I've stood at some places two feet away from a kiosk, use my app to hit a line one way. It moves, you know, the opposite way you'd actually want. And then, you know, right, walk, take one step forward and then, uh, you know, go hit the kiosk uh, at the better number now that I've created for myself. So um, that's uh that and again, that that's not going to work for for everybody or every account or every time. But just one of the things that um, has helped in the past. Now, if you're, I, I haven't really had too much experience with like using a player's card in a kiosk. It's never really been to my benefit. I know some. If you're doing like, maybe if you wanted to try and prime an account a little bit and you know uh, enter your player if you're new and you know use a few. SGP or some square stuff in maybe that could work. I don't know. I haven't tried it, but that would be the only scenario I can think of uh, that um, you, you'd want to use the player's card or, you know, you have maybe somebody, you know, has a player's card. That's uh you know, a, a higher level that is, you know, a table game guy who's got a nice player's card has been losing for years. Your uncle, your friend, your somebody, you can take that player's card, throw it in. Maybe that would help. But um, I haven't had much of that experience. Not that we would recommend that for legal purposes. No, no, obviously. no, because yeah. that I think there's a, yeah that that wouldn't be looked uh, highly. We would get them to put their players' card in and make the bet on their own behalf. Yes, yes, bring them. Yeah, yeah, bring bring bring, bring them along for for a fun trip. Just to get, because it, that's one of those things. If the book in casino catches on that you did it, um, they're probably no longer going to want your business. Correct. Um, I know it differs by state. But I, I believe that in Nevada, that once the ticket is printed, it's the ticket, no matter what. You catch them with like a horrible price, win a ton of money, that's the ticket. Is that your experience in other states as well? Or is there, because this happens online, like you bet into an online account, bad price, it gets canceled, it gets voided, you kind of don't have any recourse for that. With the kiosk, you're getting a printed ticket out. What happens in a scenario where you try to bang a... Um, poor price, an error or something like that. What's your experience with that? So this is very, this is very state dependent, as you mentioned, where um, 
I know Nevada has much more player friendly opt whereas in New Jersey recently, and I've heard a lot of cases, if you are like multi hitting a bad price or even something that they didn't want that much exposure, they've taken now the the leap to start voiding those tickets and like we'll contact you and void those tickets. Um I have not run into a situation where I have actually had uh, a ticket voided. Now, granted, I, I I will stay away from like something that I know is like horrible. Like there might be something, but I'm in terms of like uh, you know a five to one. That's five hundred to one. Not not you know gonna do any of that um, stuff because that's something that'll get you to eighty six. But I have noticed, depending on the the state, uh, that some gaming commissions might be a little bit more player friendly it depended on some state they, and so I've, I've known a few guys that have had that have like attacked some mistake lines and and gotten their tickets voided and have had to go like you know try and fight in that so I, I stay away from the actual like mistake lines on the kiosk but I think it's going to vary depending on what it is how bad you hit them and where you're at yeah I mean it's an interesting like when you're betting online you attack a bad price, it gets voided. I don't want to say no harm, no foul, because you yeah. put some time in to get that price and, and to bet it. But in a lot of cases, you're taking advantage of a bad line. When when you're going and betting in person, I mean, there's a cost associated with, with yeah. getting there to play. Like, there's gas costs money. It might have, might have cost you 15 or 20 bucks in gas just to get to the casino to place the bet. For them to then void it, I don't know. We're we're now entering territory where I'm not super happy with with that that can happen, but uh I guess each each state makes it And own you rule. factor it like what if you're now like so I'm somebody sends me this bet. I get 10 tickets at 10 to 1. It it wins, but they didn't want now they'll say well no, you had you shouldn't have been able to rebet it this many times. We're only going to grade one ticket and void the other nine. Does, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you're not going to, in in a lot of cases, if it's a, uh, you know, sometimes I've had people play uh, the one I can remember, the the Tom Brady Bucks season. They won the Super Bowl where uh, a friend of ours that we both know played a lot of uh, tickets in New Jersey, and they actually called him after the Brady signing was announced and said, we're, we're not honoring these. Like, you can come get your money, but these are all – Void. So in a situation like that, at least they're good. But there might be some scenarios where if, if, you know, if the event's the next day and you smash the bad line and then you try and go cash it in. Um, we've had so like I've had a few that were like locked in terms of uh, like you get up there, it scans. It has to be reviewed by, you know, a supervisor trading in that before they'll will pay you out to kind of make sure it's it's you or, you know, they give you a little uh, I don't call a slap on the wrist or, you know, type of uh little a speech there in terms of uh you know we're, we want we're not going to take too many of these type of thing i definitely want to get into the uh, collecting funds conversation but before we do are there any strategies in terms of when you place the bet um like avoiding bets that win a certain amount of money do you do stuff like that or will you take your shot on anything because uh, i've heard from other in-person bettors before that they tend to stay under a certain range because they don't want to have to go cash a ticket that's going to draw a ton of attention so they avoid um you know people have i've said to me before there's been times where there's like a ton of mistake lines and there'll be people that go and parlay all these things together but then they create these tickets that have like to win 100k and if they ever go try to cash that ticket there's just going to be like red flag central do you do any of that stuff uh, in terms of like trying to stay under a certain range or you just play what you're going to play yeah, I would say for the most part, uh, you know, a lot of my stuff, like straight bets, um, I agree, like, I call it a, a what's it, like a, um, you know, a, a retirement hitter, like type of thing, where if you're going to do that, you need to realize, like, make it worth your while where you're, you realize, like, losing access to that casino is, like, I'm never going to do, you know, if you did that and you won $20,000, that's not not worth that's not an amount of money to me that would make it worth it to lose access to betting at that casino so you have you know if you're gonna go for the you know the, the mistake line sgp um you, you you better really go for it because if it wins um and you go to cash the the bear the high likelihood that you're not going to be able to bet there anymore 
So for me, it's like this ROI analysis of if I'm going to do something like that, it's got to be, you know, such a such a massive score that it was worth losing, like likely losing my access uh, to that to that place forever. And remember, there it might not just be that casino sports but it might be all of them across the entire world like if you look at you know from spanky got the boot from uh i forget which place but it, like that's every casino every sports book every property in the world of theirs that you no longer can walk into so um it's really got to be worth your while if you're going to do that kind of stuff type uh, if uh, that would be my recommendation i'm i'm sure he let their customer service reps know all about uh, yeah i was gonna say yeah he brought all Go uh, a little dear. We do a thirty second. That might be, and I'm not joking. Some of the worst advice in terms of keeping your. I am telling you, I have been able to remain a customer at a number of the places around here by being super polite to the staff. Always going when they tell me, you know, hey, I'm not anymore on this or have to leave. Always, you know, leaving a nice tip in that. Uh, I, I could not disagree more. And again, Spanky gives a lot of good information. But in terms of that specifically, I think for your average rec, rec plus player or even sharp player, that, that is not I've never heard of any scenario where being a huge dick to the customer service people benefited a better in any way whatsoever. There's no story where you go in there and you said, my limits suck. F you. Oh, so, sir, sir. Sorry, sorry about that. Here, here's 5000 on, uh, you know, the, the points over prop you wanted. It just happened. I, I'm still trying to process that one. I, I mean, I get it. Like, I get up the, I get the uh, build up or like the pent up frustration of just yeah, years yeah, and yeah, years. Sure. And like, you reach a boiling point where you just associate every single employee of that sports book with like being the devil, basically. Yes, I get it. Also, I'm on the, I'm on your side with it as well. Like, it's just not going to get you anywhere. It's not going to do anything for you. It's not going to do anything for like one of a lot of bookmakers that I know. The one way to get kicked out if you're not a sharp is treating the, the service people like trash or, or going off on them. Like I've people have gotten um, trespassed for treating the staff like that. Not sharp people. People I've heard like their friends and stuff that can't go into somewhere because of how they treated the staff. So yeah, I I, I just uh, I would strongly advise against that. Even if you're getting limited or told to you know not to, like uh, you you just want to take it as professional as possible exactly um on the collecting fund side uh do you ever encounter issues with collect like is it one of those let's say you you want a bunch of tickets at one place you go cash them all at once you split it up into different trips do you try to do be like a little bit methodical about it is there any sort of um advice that you can give on that front you know what i i've i've never encountered too much uh of an issue hashing the actual tickets the and i've heard some of the strategies of people saying that like you, you want to split it up one guy i know likes to mail them in uh you can kind of sign them and mail them in and then they send you a check back um so that's one strategy to to kind of do it I, I don't usually have the need to leverage that for the most part like the, the places i frequent they they know who i am uh you know they know what i'm doing they're they're okay with it to a certain extent um as long as it's you know not to not over a certain level so for the most part the the caching um i don't think it's going to like significantly benefit you one way or another in terms of how you do it where uh in a lot of cases they'll see like if you hit something 20 times it's very easy for trading to go in and see these 20 bats were placed within, you know, uh, five minutes of each other at the same kiosk. So if one gets cashed, they can like take that ticket number and then go link it to the other 19. So it doesn't really like, there's no benefit of like, well, I, I, you know, I did three here and three there and then three at this time. It's like, um, I, I don't think they really care as much in terms of the payout amount as seeing like what you bet and when you bet it. A anybody, that looks into it for you know five minutes on their end can can see what happened when it happened how many you bet that type of thing. If you place the bet anonymous anonymously, do you have to show identification when you cash it? Yes. No matter what. No matter what the size. No matter what. So they you, you usually have to fill out um, a W. I think it's called the W nine form in the United States, uh, which is a some type of tax, especially if the amount is over 
ten thousand dollars, I think. Um, so there's a form that they'll make you file, and then once you fill it out, once you have it on file, they know who you are. Um, so that like even when I usually on a catch, I'll give them either my player number, or my player's card, and all the the tickets that I had. But I didn't use that on the front end to actually place the ticket. So yeah, you you have to show you can't do the ticket. And now you can if you have a winning ticket. This is a little we'll go and it's under the amount of the kiosk max. So we talked about that in Michigan. It's like in most places, two to three K. So if you have a winning ticket, that's under that. And you can scan it in, you can scan that winner. Then, then you have boom, your funds in the tent and then boom, like uh, place, place more bets from there. Got it. So it would be who you, and ter- especially in terms of efficiency, where like, instead of me having a slide, 30, you know, uh, Benjamins into a kiosk over and over. If I have some winning tickets that are under that amount, scan them in uh, and then can kind of, you know, A, go faster and B, stay a little bit more anonymous. So that's um, that helps, too, in terms I, I you know, uh, Spoon, who you've had on in the past. Uh, I, I've talked to Spoon. JT. I haven't had him on. Oh, OK. Yeah, I, I thought he came on for an NBA, but um, he was the one that like he would just have a. uh like a bunch of of like you just put the money in and hit withdraw and it gives you a voucher and so you just have a bunch of vouchers on you at all the time so you can like uh scan the vouchers in so that was one where like uh and it was a while ago i remember seeing him say that, so that was kind of a light bulb like oh man it's no wonder he's the goods uh you know he, he had uh he had the system well you know all down uh years ago yeah it's got to be tough carrying 30 benjamins in a duffel bag around the casino right <laughs> yeah yeah especially yeah five thousand five thousand as we know five thousand you gotta you know have your you know your backpack and your suitcase ready and uh you know we're getting ready to go there but yeah that it also in yeah gives you a little bit of a layer of of safety uh in terms of not sure if you've been to a detroit casino on late on a weekday <laughs> but uh it, it ain't exactly like uh treasure island if you know what i'm saying I know what you're saying. Um, a lot of people will not understand the reference that we just gave. You don't have to. The, the point is you don't need a duffel bag or a backpack to carry around $5,000 with you. <laughs> you could put it in your pocket. That's the point that we're trying to make. Uh, anything we haven't covered with the kiosks uh, that is worthwhile, whether that's like some sort of uh, uh, you know advice on how to use them, things to avoid, anything else that we've, uh, we've missed here? I... I found that, and this is something that I never knew, is that, um, and this is why, you know, I kind of keep it still, you know, on the, on the up and up for the most part, is there's, they have, if they want it, they have access uh, to be able to see, like, the the actual footage, like the sports book can ask the casino for footage of you, you in there. So, like, even, you know, you're doing anonymous, like, you don't want to cross the line too much and think that it's, you can be a hundred percent anonymous because they there's there's ways for them to find out uh you know to who it was type of thing. So um I, I would say, you know, keep it within the realm of you know of reasonability, you know. If I so I know some people like to to chase that, you know, one shot, but uh yeah, there's there's ways for them to to identify you even without using a player's card. Yeah, good advice. Uh I remember attending the ICE um conference in London probably four or five years ago. And the technology that they had already had for casinos, like just blew me away with um, the, the mapping that they have. As soon as you step in the door, every machine you've played, how you've walked throughout, even where you like may have shrugged as if you were going to go one way and went in another direction. There's like studies focused on why you might have tur- like not made the turn at that point and what it's actually crazy. So um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm not like a, big brothers watching you uh, type of guy, but like, yes. Uh, and I mean, it's gotta be only a matter of time if, if before there's cameras in the machines itself, if there aren't already, correct? Yeah, I would agree. I think that uh, is definitely coming at some point. And like anything else in this, uh, I'm sure the uh, New Jersey has really bared bear the brunt of this in terms of the risk management, where I know there's some places that like, they have somebody, kiosks are roped off they have an employee and you have to like give your id to them to see who you are to go to even to go in and have access to them so yeah like anything else uh i think it's only going to get bit tougher as we go along here yep anything they can do in jersey to not take hitman's bets right yeah hey hey that, uh, and listen 
They, if it, maybe if we send him footage of the forward progress bets from this year. Maybe he'll have all his limit bag. If we can, you know, cut up a little, have Zach uh, cut it up and send it to every casino. Hitman will be getting, you know, VIP. He'll be eating lobster and steak at all the, you know, the places for free here after that. Jokes on the casinos for sure. If they didn't want to take, <laughs> yeah, they, take yeah, the they football bets. A pretty penny this year. Tough, tough break. Uh, tough break for them. Um, switching gears here, very different topic, but you've been very vocal, especially in the last six months, um, and very upfront about dealing with anxiety and having an anxiety disorder, um, and just like really just just bearing the that to the public um, and describing the process and like basically how much of a toll it's taken on you at times where you know deprivation of sleep, not being able to go outside and, and all sorts of things. And first of all, I applaud you for putting that out publicly because there's a lot of people who suffer in silence for one that just, so credit to you for doing that because I think it, it lets people know that like they're not alone in that situation. Um, yeah. But you also are involved in, in the betting industry, uh, which is just like, filled with emotional swings and ups and downs. Um, so like, how, how are you managing this on a day-to-day -day now? Is it improving for you? Um, have you seeked help in regards to this situation? Do you talk to people? What's that process been like for you over the course of the last several months? Uh, because I know for a while it was eating away at you and you're very upfront about it. And listen, we don't always see you know, it's not always public facing how a person's feeling and, and, and people can hide things in there. But if you're comfortable with it, kind of share your experience a little bit over the past several months and things that you've been doing that have been making this easier for you. Yeah, you know, I'd say five years ago, I, uh, I had a really rough bout with the you know, original about where I think I'd always been anxious to a certain extent, but was, you know, ton of stress was uh, on, you know, going great and had the first time where started having like what you would call disordered anxiety um and was like i had no idea you know what was going on what is that like i'm having uh you know these saw so my body's like you know i'm having all these like physical symptoms um and you know originally uh went to a, to a doctor got prescribed some medication um and you know did a little bit of therapy uh and you know was able to to get back to a good place in you know a couple of months so I, you know not four or five years went by and I had like like kind of human uh, instinct is like I, I had kind of let the the ball down in terms of like the self care and making sure that I wasn't getting too stressed. You know, I was having some relationship stuff. I was having obviously a ton on my plate with the the betting. Uh, and you know, Joey Corporate was uh, you know getting back in the office and that and starting has had some of those you know like where it it kind of re flared up uh, and you know was kind of having a a relapse into it where you started having like, you know, nights where I wasn't sleeping very well and kind of the return of like the, the dread and some of the physical symptoms and wanted to, um, you know, I think for this space too, like I, I have talked to so many people that sports betting can be such a, especially if you're doing it on, you know, a rec plus or a professional level, it's so prevalent that so many people, and I, and I don't like, you know, I'm never, I would never name names or that, but people I've talked to that, have have either dealt with anxiety or depression in some form um it, it's just pretty ramp i think spanky had one I, you know i trolled him a little bit earlier but he had one great that said everybody in this industry is mentally fucked up in some way some more than others and and i i, I agree with like he was you know he kind of said it as a little bit of a joke but there's uh you know a lot of stuff that that people especially in this industry go through because it's as you said it's a high stress industry it's a high variance industry um a couple of things I did was I, I don't, you know, obviously I still take the, you know, medication. I, I got back into some, you know, good CBT there and really got into it. Psychoeducation and CBT um, and not just I, I kind of half-assed it the first time around. Started taking some medication, was feeling better, didn't really go full in. Really dove into it this time um, to, to kind of say, OK, I'm going to fix this, you know, going forward. And really uh, you know, wanted to be so reliant and had to make some some life changes. I, I was, you know, you know, when I was a younger man. I could drink, uh, you know, a couple of, you know, Dan Campbell coffees and, uh, you know, put in front of the screen all day and go crazy. And that, that was starting to, uh, it just wears on you at some point and your, your stress jug or whatever overflows and you start, uh, feeling, you know, start, started having some, uh, some rough times. And so the, you know, the only way out of it is to kind of 
undo some of those bad habits and realize, you know, kind of what you're dealing with and, and go out and get some help. And I know I, I've been more vocal with it because whatever you, you want to call it a gift, I don't mind. Like, I know there's a lot of guys and a lot of men that, like, don't want to talk, but especially men. The stigma, you don't want to talk about it publicly. You don't want to be looked at. Like, that has never bothered me in any sense. So it's easy for me to, like, I mean, I'm a guy who tried, you know, you went out there on video and, you know, tried to do 250 push-ups and came up by, you know, 80 <laughs> short. So, like, I don't mind my well, I, like, I would say uh, at least yeah, 180 80 short 80 on, nine, prop, on proper technique. That. Like, yes, yeah. I, you know, wanted to put it out there. So, like, people in the space could see that, like, if you're not as comfortable um, or you're not somebody that would want that shared or any of that, like, oh, this person's going through. Here's a few resources I use to, to you know, help educate myself. Um, and, and you know what? Uh, you know, like, maybe, you know, get to the point where um, you, you don't have to, to, to have that hanging over your head at some point. It doesn't mean you got to be, you know, not everybody's going to be comfortable being as public with it. But, um, you know, something that uh, – because – it's a tough thing to go through. Uh, do you have any sort of like specific uh, relaxation techniques or, or mindfulness practices um, that have been helpful for you? We had Rufus on a long time ago and we talked about this subject a little bit and he talked about how he's, you know, getting back into the gym, uh, regular exercise, got into some meditation. Um, for me, I have specific things where like if I'm overwhelmed, I just put on like some noise canceling headphones and I just listen to music. I, exercise works well for me. Is there anything that you found for yourself in particular that tends to work outside of, of medication um, or, you know, a, anything like that? You know what? I, I would say getting, finding a way to get away from the screen, whether that be your phone or the computer, and do something engaging where you're my where like you're, you're gonna do something that would be maybe a little bit healthier whether that be i didn't honestly it had been years years since i had physically read a book people i always make the can't read joke i hadn't read anything not on a screen in years and actually you know i've bought in a few books and did you know did a reading where and that'd be i got a hot maybe you take a bath maybe you take a hot tub something that gets you away because i had had part of was the compulsion to always be checking, whether it be a score, whether it be a telegram message, whether it be a text. Uh, I had found myself just compulsively always being like locked in. And so the permission to kind of get away from that for periods of time, and especially, you know, for a guy, if you're a up down guy, I know that's something where like, you, you know, you might walk away from the 30 minutes and all you can think about is that, you, you know, you it might have cost yourself, you know, a couple of dimes or something, or you missed a number and that kind of having to, to walk back and whatever, whatever exercise, whether it be the walk, whether the meditation you mentioned, something that you enjoy that's actually, call it relaxing or or some type of activity that, uh, whether it be listening to a podcast, maybe listen to Circles Off, a, uh, just something that isn't, you know, giving you such an intense cognitive load um, where you can, and that that's what I started doing more proactively throughout the day is letting the phone go for 15, 20 minutes, doing some breathing, doing some, uh, you know, whatever, your meditation for short periods of time throughout the day where I was giving my mind a break. Um, Because for long periods of time, it would be get up, get locked in, get super caffeinated, I'd be locked in all day and almost subconsciously didn't realize like how much stress I was putting on myself until it becomes a, you know, a problem or a disorder. So so you start feeling the physical and, uh, you know, mental, like, uh, you know, uncomfortableness with it. Yep. Totally get it. I've seen the uh, Joey Poindexter look with the reading glasses in some of the videos. uh, Hey, yeah. Listen, you know, don't don't say you got cleaned up a little bit. Yeah. 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 Uh, you, You still holding strong with the caffeine or? Doing all I'm doing is decaf right now. And again, I don't want you like that might not be, I don't want to say like that. That's like, oh, caffeine. You stop caffeine. It's a cure all. It was I was probably a drinking too much, and then b when I was really feeling anxious. Um, that that's like I've heard it referred to as like pouring gas on a fire type of thing, where you know caffeine's going to make you have those symptoms. Whereas, so for me, it was a time to step back. Will I, you know, will I stay caffeine free forever? I don't know. I think it was just one of those things that helped me in the short term interim. That I wanted to see if I could do to, you know, like kind of put, uh, you know, the challenge to myself. And so we're going on that. So, yeah, I mean, maybe, you know, if you're one of those people that's drinking like 
Uh, I know some people, I mean, if you're having like five, six cups a day, drinking it all day, then maybe that's something that, you know, you can kind of directly link to, to having some of those things. But it was one of those things that, yeah, I, I thought for the short, you know, for the time being, it was, uh, we'll see if I can, you know, get off the sauce and uh, just been doing decaf for now. Good stuff. Hanging in there. Stay strong. Yeah, staying strong, but stay, staying on the staying on the wagon for now. Uh, we'll see if we'll, we'll see what happens next football season. But for now, uh, you know it's it's uh, it's nice. And I'll tell you what, it, I, I you know I stopped betting college. I like I, I so I've gotten back into betting college. But I stopped betting college basketball because like literally because of stress, like stress and anxiety. I was like I'm out for that. So maybe give yourself like I was I would give myself Saturday and Sunday for football, and then during the week. I'm not watching any of this shit. Like, I'm not – stuff that I have wagers on, I'm not watching. And, again, that's not for – whatever it does, uh, maybe you, you want to do that or that. And, again, I'm talking for people that maybe you're having some, you know, stress, anxiety too much. For me, it was like I'm giving myself Monday through Friday. I'm not sweating games. I'm not getting, you know, involved in that. Or, or if I'm going to watch Monday Night Football, I'm not going to have a sizable wager on that type of thing of, like, I'll give myself a day or two, but I'm not, you know, I'm not going to do the – six seven days a week be watching i remember years ago on e, you know espn plus watching some like me basketball that i had on and like absolutely wanting to put my head through the screen um and you know that i that's one of those times i always remember like okay this this was this this needed to change yep well, at least you recognized it and you figured it out and now you've moved on and uh hopefully you're better off for it uh joey kanish does appear on hit the books here part of the hammer betting network this wasn't on the agenda for today just came down has nothing to do with betting sources the idea of a 14 team college football playoff was discussed by the cfp management committee at meetings in the dallas area today if that happened it would begin in 2026 nothing is imminent but the idea is being discussed 14 team college football play can i ask you like why they think that just adding more and more teams is going to solve any problems it's just and then, like, this is this is the Mark Jackson meme. What happened to the game I love? Uh, you know, like, uh, it's like, I, I just, there's so much going on with college. And it's like, it's all, there's there's not a great governing body. As you know, this isn't like, you know, where you have uh, a strong commissioner in the pro sports. And there's so many, you know, changes that are solely driven uh, monetarily, whether, you know, it be that, and, and again, not that I, I don't want to be like, get off my lawn guy of like, I don't mind kids making money or getting paid for this stuff or all that, but it, you know what, it goes from 12 and then it's like, oh, we can add another game and make it 14. And it, it's one of those things. And you've, you've seen it where, where a lot of like the pro sports regular seasons outside of the NFL, who gives a shit about like, you know, MLB game 126 or <laughs> NBA game, you know, 42 or any of this stuff. And that that was never an issue with the college football regular season because there was so much on the line every week. And you start to get farther and farther away with that where now everything's gonna sh- everything is gonna change as your experience as a fan now, where like it used to be, you know, that undefeated season, which would get you into the, you know, the top two seed and maybe get you a national championship. You've got to totally reframe where like if you're in the Big Ten or the SEC, nine and three is a great year. Where like you might be sitting there, you know, a few years ago, and like, um, I don't know, I don't know the fan experience and the the television experience. It just seems like a lot of things that have changing that are not improving the game in any way whatsoever. And again, short term, is it going to matter? No, long term, um. I don't know, man. I don't know where it's going. It feels like it's going to look a lot different in a few years um, and not for the better. What, what it, this is coming from a Canadian that, listen, I, I grew up watching college football, but I, I don't live it and breathe it like a lot of Americans do on Saturdays. I just like to watch good football games whenever they're on. Would it be that challenging to just make it the, like the college football playoff dependent on the year? Like at the end of last season, they could have just said, hey, listen, there's an argument for six teams here. You know, Florida State and Georgia could be in. Let's make it a six-team playoff. Some years, it's like, clearly, these are the best two teams in the country, and there's no one close to them, so let's get to season's end, and let's say this is going to be the national championship. Like, is it is it that difficult to be adaptable in a season? Like, I, I don't really understand that, why we just have to force it to be like, okay, it's going to be four teams, or it's going to be 14 teams, or whatever. Like, 
why can't it just be based off of the landscape for that specific year? Yeah, you know, I mean, before the 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 BCS and all that, I guess they had some almost a, a pseudo version of that where you might have the one and you know two teams playing like a bowl game depending on who it is or be able to decide it that way. I, I found that like the more subjectivity you put in, and then it's like. Who's deciding that? You know what I'm saying? Because in terms of like, okay, you're going to give it to this committee of guys who are, you know, kind of, I don't want to say bought and paid for, but are yeah. really, you know, dependent on the TV network to to kind of decide who they were, you know, Alabama getting in over Florida State type of thing. It's like, if there was a, a common sense way to do that, I, I understand, but it's like you're never going to have one, you're never going to have total agreements, and two, you're never going to have this body of people that um, it's almost like you would need, uh, you know, a, a college football fan boat to get it in, you know, that type of thing. And I don't know. I, I just I thought the 14 playoff probably made the most sense. I'm, I'm you know, kind of open to a little bit of the the expansion details, but agree once you start as as, as you just say. Once you open the Pandora's box and you start seeing more money for more games, you get to the like the stupid, uh, you know, the the play whatever the sixty eight team to you that now they they want for the college basketball March Madness tourney. Nobody cares about the Tuesday game that you got, you know, in those games. So it's like you almost get to a point where you start having uh, more and more irrelevant games that that could be in a playoff. Uh, not a huge fan of that. Yeah, I mean, I guess it's just happening across all sp- all sport, like. The World Cup, for example, the Euro Cup and stuff like oh, this. Keep expanding it yeah. to all these teams yeah. that are in there, and you get these games where teams lose like seven nil. Brutal. Uh, there's brutal never stuff. like there's never any contract because once you go once you get there and you establish that baseline of dollar amount, that team be like it never contract. Like it'll never ever go back uh, outside of you know some massive happy. Like you're stuck with that regardless of what happens once the checks are rolling in for the additional game. So yeah, I agree. Uh, I don't love it, but. You know, uh, it's what, like I always say, I, this is what we always say in the Hit the Book Show. Are we going to stop watching? No. Yeah. So they, they they got me over a barrel. What are you going to do? I, they, they could do what I could start, you know, having guys, you know, you know, with pom-poms on the sideline. Am I still going to watch a college football? Yeah. So uh, I, I can bitch about it all day. I'm not, I'm not going to turn it off. I mean, it's I'm in the same boat as you. I complain about the NFL nonstop. Yeah. Uh, uh, why are they going to call that? Why can't they do this? Why can't we get, like, automatic, you know, review of penalties in real time? It doesn't matter. It's just, I'm going to watch. I'm going to yeah. watch. Until, until yeah. it's bad enough that I'm not going to watch, then uh, it, it's a moot point. Um, last thing, and before we get into tweets that trigger us here really quickly, really flying under the radar. Just want to get your opinion on this. Des Bryant, my former favorite player. Des caught it. He actually didn't caught catch it. it. He didn't catch it based off the rules. Based off time. the yeah the rules that no, they've f- modified four times since and then. Des didn't catch it. Should have been... Should have caught it, based off of whatever. Anyways, <laughs> cash is a massive parlay this week. Thirteen games, something like seven hundred and seventy-five dollar risk. Uh, did anyone look at this parlay? I and love like, this theory. You told me about the theory pre-show, and I love it. Like I'm all I'm all the way in on it now. Okay, like for what's Des Bryant doing? Putting seven hundred and seventy-five dollars. On, on college basketball parlays with, like, these mid-major teams. <laughs> Do you think, like, Des Bryant is following? Like, he's not. So that was, like, my first... I saw this thing. Yeah. I'm like, why? This this something reeks here. But <laughs> yeah. then I, I saw this video afterwards where he got it all paid out in cash. Like, he didn't get the wire or anything like that. And I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, obviously this guy placed this bet or somebody placed this bet for Des. This is speculation, and, by the way, people. And didn't him and, like, LeBron, haven't they, like, a few times been, like, LeBron be like, Adam be like, yo, Dez, who you on this week? And LeBron like, oh, hey, Bron. Like, like it's this organic conversation that happened. Like, oh, Bron, I like the Steelers and, uh, you know, a couple other teams in this part. So I agree with you that there there's more at play here. And not, not to be, like, tinfoil you know Joey Tinfoil over here, but yes, I- I'm with you that there's there's more to to that than than just the oh he picked about 13 teams off a of, off a list and uh, you know hit it. Well, I listen. I'm sure this guy uh, he made a, made a ton of money playing football, even though he retired early. 
add endorsements, whatever. Like he can de- like he can afford to be placed in seven hundred and fifty dollar parlays. Don't get me wrong, but the likelihood that maybe someone's betting his ad- account parlayed some plus EV money lines to compound, you know, the payout. Right, right, right. Which, which I mean, there's certain people on Twitter that are always like, "Oh, never parlay." Uh, you know, the, the that bender guy who he gets into it with everybody. He's like, ah, don't par. Well, I mean, if, if you're parlaying like a bunch of edges together, you're just compounding the edge further. It's bigger payout. But like, is I, I just find it very, it's within the range of possibilities. I just find it really weird that Dez would be sitting at home, 13 game parlays, bunch of mid, mid majors, college basketball, getting the payout in cash. I don't know. Like, you get the payout in cash because then you can go pay the other people and it's yeah, not on the books. Yeah. Right. No, I, I'm with you. I, I think there's I think there's some credence to this more so than, yeah, it was very, when you like it, because you said it, then I looked at the ticket. I was like, oh, yeah, that does. Um, and he's been, yeah, and he's been kind of dabbling in the, the space, you know, for, for some time. So, um, yeah, I'm, I, I would not be surprised if uh, there, there, was, there was more to that story that we may never know. I mean, we probably will never know that. By the way, people, just just one person's opinion here, just uh, sent off the uh, the Pizzola Spidey senses a little bit when I saw when I saw that play. Anyways, like when uh, I don't. Yeah. You, Zach can cut this out if it's if it's too. But like when uh, he worked for the Ringer now, old Raheem Palmer mm-hmm. was um was 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 placing some big big tickets uh mm-hmm. around there where um. Pretty sure he was, you know, running for. Uh, I, for I don't. I, I don't know. This we story. may or may not know. So I, there was, you know, like where it was like, huh, this guy's like works for, uh, action network. Then it was the ringer, and he's placing like thirty thousand on an NBA total. Like, mm. well, might be, might be a foot there. So uh, <laughs> yeah, there, there tends to be more the. Then uh, meets the eye in some of these situations. Hey man, Simon Hunter's placing million dollar bets on the Super well, Bowl. That, yeah, that, well, and he's that, trying to get one. off the positions live as well. Apparently. Yeah, 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 yeah. Well, you got you. Hopefully, he brought his uh, you know uh, suitcase to get the to get the couple grand from the counter. Right, and, well, and the it's hard to, to do room. in Hawaii. It's hard so, to do yeah. in Hawaii, where he was extradited to by. Uh, we need a segment on this show called Simon Says. I'm developing <laughs> it. I'll get a clip every single. Here's the thing. Uh, we'll, we'll move on shortly. I don't have an obsession with this guy, but be- once we did that episode, we like our, our famous en- episode on Circles Off, it's got our most views of like me and Johnny reacting to Simon Hunter and, uh, and Ross Tucker. I get people nonstop who are sending me clips of stuff of him, DMing me clips. Can you believe what he said this week? I don't follow this guy. I don't see this stuff, but I get sent so much stuff and there's like, it's too good. Like there's just a gold mine of stuff that we can, that we have to cover, and this extradition story, <laughs> this, this, this needs to be covered in detail. Is, is uh, Mona Lisa of 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 absurdness? I, we need to get this guy on. I need to get him or Chad. I need I need some I need some who would, explanation. Who would who would force you to go? Like, what are you talking of? Like, what are you in witness protection? Like, what? What would be what would be the mechanism of what what body of, of is forcing you to move west? He didn't even say why. Like you've got to move. I got to get off the east coast. I, well, I'm like going to Sopranos episode. I, I'm I'm paraphrasing here just so the audience knows. But essentially, there is a one minute clip circulating from from something where Simon says that he <laughs> tried to create his own sport. He tried to leave his current syndicate to create his own syndicate in New Jersey. And his his current syndicate got word of it, and they said, no, this is not happening. Get the fuck out of here. You're going somewhere else, but we're gonna pay for you to go there and to live there. And as an F you to them, he said, all right, I'm going out to Hawaii because that's gonna be the most expensive. Then he got there, <laughs> lived there for two months and said, oh, like the betting sucks here. No shit, dude. Who could have like you're a pro sports better. You thought the you thought you're going to the biggest betting scene in Hawaii and he moved <laughs> back now and I don't know what's going on, but like there's so many questions I have in this story and this is how it was like again, it comes back to the definition of what he thinks a syndicate is. 
but in in no world could I like the people if, if the people I bet with now if I just said guys I no longer need you I'm gonna go on and do my own thing they would not be like no you got to get the fuck out of Toronto yeah you gotta <laughs> get out you, you gotta head over to Montreal and, and we're gonna we're gonna pay for you now. to go there you yeah, go now yeah, but, but, but we're gonna cover the cost we're gonna give you per diem for uh for your for your costs you gotta get out of here but we'll pay the freight and uh, your rent there's something that there's something that's going on here that I I don't understand. I I never will. But uh, anyways, Simon says coming soon. The circles off. Uh, <laughs> Zach hit it. Tweets at trigger us. I don't know what we're yelling about. I've never seen you mad. I get paved. Why are you in such a bad mood? What do you care? It's only a game. Why do you have to be mad? All right. Uh, a reminder. This is an offensive segment. I don't mean it to be. Last time we did this, there was a guy that wanted to fight me at the next bet bash. We've since cleared that up. Big D, thumbs up. Oh for yeah, Big D. Big I D. Li- I, I you know him. He's uh he's boys with uh Fraley, who I like, whose Twitter I li- I like. I know some people. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Tweet this. Who tweets that trigger us? Uh, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you. The segments that trigger us has yes. been uh has been a common theme. <laughs> I, I will say, we haven't done this in a while. I believe the last time we did this, Kirk Evans was with me uh, in studio when we did this. Uh, there's a lot that we're going to go through. Some of these came from myself. Some of these came from Kanish. Some of these have come, which we've been collecting through Circles Off DMs, through our community, the hammer.bet forward slash the nails. There's a smorgasbord I'm of stuff. I'm incredibly in excited for this. Like, I, I didn't even look at it. I just, I, cause I wanted instant reaction on some of you were sending a few to me, but I wanted like my initial, like uh, shock and awe on some of them. Some of these, I, I just, I was on vacation last week and I, I said this at the beginning of the show, Kanish Twitter, <coughs> God, I'm dying here. Twitter <laughs> gave me the, the for you tab instead of following one day. And I'm scrolling through. I'm like, what the fuck is all of this? <laughs> like, and I just started bookmarking these. It, it was crazy. But uh, we'll start it here with uh, Joe Delera. Joe Delera, NBA writer. And I didn't even know he worked for Action Network. I'm, I'm not picking on the Action Network people. <laughs> I swear to God, people. This got filtered to me. Just total BS that FanDuel is now boosting this when LeBron is saying he won't be playing much today. FanDuel had a boost for the NBA All-Star game. LeBron James to score 20 plus points. They went from minus 130 to plus 150. LeBron arrives at the All-Star game, says he has an injured ankle. He's not going to be playing the entire game for sure. This guy thinks it's total BS that FanDuel is now boosting this. A reminder to everyone out there. You are responsible for the bets that you place. Not every boost in the history of bet boosts is a good boost. Not every boost is going to be a good boost. Sometimes there's going to be information that comes out after the fact where you have a shit bet and you're stuck on one. Live with it, deal with it. You click the button yourself. Credit to this sports book, they actually removed the boost after this information. Oh, did they? They did. I can't, there's a, there's a part of me that like, I know loved it. Of like, <laughs> uh, like where it's like, you, you know, like you know, as, a, as a player, as a game, you like taking shots, with them, but this is like the book taking a shot back. It's like, oh, we got this report. Hey, let's boost up uh, LeBron here and see how many suckers we can get to take the plus 150. He didn't you, really mind it, to be honest with you. Like, uh, I mean, not the, I can't, you know, can, I mean, what's the max you can usually bet on, unless it's uh, 50, yes, 50, 100. On an NFL side. Right, right. So, yeah. but yeah, I thought it was a little crafty, to be honest with you. Well, the, the reality is they had no freaking clue. Can it, like, here's the thing. You know what this leads to? This leads to the next conversation of like Vegas scripted. knew. Vegas scripted. knew, scripted. Yep. They're, yep. they're out to Everybody's fleece Everyone's all you. in bed together. Yeah. <laughs> it, it just goes Everybody's back got to, their cloak on at the, the meeting saying, how can we screw the the, the Joe the, the Joe Dallaire out there today, baby? Yep. It, it, it all goes back to that Justin Herbert boost, which was Justin Herbert won or more touchdowns on a Monday night football game, which was like boosted to three to one or something absurd. And he never threw the touchdown. And it all goes back to that. Listen, it it was up there. The news came out, they pulled it down. What are you gonna do? Shit happens. You're responsible for the bets you place. End of story. I'll tell you what you could do. Read more books. You could read more books. You could read more books. books. That That is definitely would suffice. All right, next one on the board here. 
Uh, all right, what do we got here? This was a this was a late entry into the party here. <laughs> I missed this one. I could barely read it. Um, Benson, circa our buddy, uh, posts a line on Purdue or Wisconsin to win the uh, college basketball championship. No is minus three thirty, and he gets quote tweeted by some goof here, uh, who says specifically. That's funny. I just talked about this last week and yesterday and said, there's no way Purdue or UConn win it this year. Minus 330 is a lock, but I don't play odds like that, even though it's free money. This is a, <laughs> ma- like, put this one in the Louvre, hang it, like, next to the Mona Lisa. Minus 330 is a lock, but I don't play odds like that, even though it's free money. <laughs> And he's the, and he was the number one rated service by uh, Las Vegas Journal. Also, do you notice he's got some random capitalization in here in this tweet? Like, free on F is capitalized. Yesterday is capitalized. Like, why? This is here? this is a this is quite a gem here. Uh, I I, uh, I don't play minus three thir- as if it's like a blue horseshoe. Like, you, you don't play <laughs> free money. Let me tell you something. But go go down the street and see Fez at Fremont because he just laid minus 4,000 on, uh, you know, one of these teams to beat like a mid-major this week. This is the equivalent. Like, first of all, if, you, if you're if you throwing around the L word, which I hate, lock, by the way, and you're yeah. saying things are free money, this is the equivalent of somebody saying, like, you flip a coin. If you get heads or tails, you win, but you got to pay minus 1,000. And you're like, nah. It's too, it's too steep. <laughs> Both outcomes a winner. Free money. I know it's free money, but I'm not doing a, a thousand to win a hundred. Like no chance. Uh, I don't know where, I don't know where these, this was, I don't, whoever sent this to me was a late edition. Appreciate those who get involved. Next one, Zach. Oh, it's a non-sports related one. Leafs fan tosses another Leafs fan hat on the ice. Let's start this video right from the beginning. Fun Leaf crime. Did, I don't know if you saw this, but this is a Leaf game. Austin Matthews scores a hat trick. They're celebrating. This guy just grabs the hat of the guy in front of him. <laughs> Start it from the beginning one more time, Zach. From the beginning one more time. If we could get the music playing and everything, that would be actually even better. <laughs> you fucking asshole. This is non-sports betting related. I'm not a... Kanish, I don't know about you when you go to sporting events. I, like, keep to myself. I don't yeah. celebrate in people's faces. I don't want to be the center of attention. If someone grabbed the hat off of my head and threw it on the ice, <laughs> that person would be thrown onto the ice along with that my hat that just went there. This is, like, at this point, we've gone too far as a culture where we're trying to get, like, good TikToks and Instagrams yeah, and stuff, yeah, that yeah. it's like we don't even care anymore. That guy that got his hat thrown off the ice is a season ticket holder for the Leafs. He always wears these fedoras to the games, different fedoras for different games. Oh, so this guy is, I, I like, purposely did it to this guy because he's a known Leafs fan. I, I don't know the whole story here, other than the guy that threw the hat didn't come back for the rest of the game. He left to get a beer, go to the washroom, he didn't return. People, like, you got to draw the line somewhere. I, Don't do stupid shit like I'm that. I'm so conflicted here because the video is funny as shit. It's like, hilarious. It's such a funny <laughs> video. But at the same, like, if you're going to do, do it and do the video, like, have a hundred bucks or something to give the guy and be like, you know, like, hey, you know, like, hey we're, we did it for a day here. After you stop taping, like, Give him some money for the hat here or something like that. But yeah, to, it's a it's a absolute dick move to the fullest here to uh to throw like the, the toss. The sombrero toss is pretty good. Uh but yeah, that uh man, that that would be like it tweets that trigger like videos that trigger it. Yeah, I agree. That would be like instant, like you're in a fight there. Oh, well, he's lucky this happened in Toronto and the guy that he did it to right, is yeah. like a, you know, 60-year-old man or something like that because he did that at at some other events and you know, you There's do that in Santa Clara, Clara There's or stadiums you... in the US. If you do that, uh you might yeah. it, it, you might not be walking out of there. 
This happened at a rate. If this happened at a Raiders 49ers you're game, you're dead. Half the stadium like legitimately, would be, there's a chance you're dead. Yeah. Or like a, a Mexican like La Liga game oh. or something like that. You did. You you might be. You know, your like, whole you family know, would be those. wiped off the face of the earth. It wouldn't just you're right, be you, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah, he's wouldn't, lucky wouldn't recommend this outside of Canada. No. <laughs> All right, Zach. Next one. All right. Uh, this this one I know specifically what it is. Again, non-sports related, triggered me hard. We need to see the original video here from who is that? What's that? Jake Lucky? Yeah. Okay, Jake Lucky's Jake uh, Lucky. a, a streamer. But anyways, this is the video um, and the audio we'll play right now. Honey, I'm on stream and you're on speakerphone. I just wanted to tell you, I got so many plants for my butterfly garden. And it's going to be awesome. And I'm buying ladybugs, like a whole bunch of them. <laughs> That's great. Do you, know, do you want to know why? Uh, why? Ladybugs, they kill off other insects. The ladybugs? Yeah. Wow. Okay, you're an idiot. Bye. Jesus Christ. <sighs> That's great, honey. Okay, we can end it here. So this is the, the video. This is a guy doing live stream. He's playing, what, a war zone or something like that. Gets a call from his wife. She's doing a butterfly garden buying some ladybugs. He obviously doesn't give a shit. You know, I, I get it. Uh, Vanessa Cade, Canadian poker player. Back when I used to play a lot of low-stakes cash games, practically every night I'd listen to guys complaining incessantly about their wives. I've never understood this. Like, if it's such a drag to talk to your partner and you see them as an annoying burden, what's the point? Let them go and find someone who will treat her like she is loved and important. Decent people don't act like this. This guy is setting a bad example for thousands of young viewers who will think it's cool to minimize and be dismissive of their partners. Feigning annoyance with someone you care about for the clout isn't actually cool. It makes you seem like a jerk. And I mean mostly the things he said after she hung up where he rolled his eyes and like couldn't believe it. This one bothered me, okay? A lot. Yeah. I don't know yeah. I don't know Vanessa Kate. Um I don't know Jake Lucky. Do don't know any this is this is not like a I want to turn this into like a political men versus women type of thing or whatever. Right. There, there, there's not, just because you find an imperfection with your partner or find an annoyance with your partner, spouse, significant other, does not mean that you think that they are a drag on your life. Like this is the most extreme reaction to what was just like, he was just like annoyed in real time. Right, right. Listen, it, I, if we, you're... Like this, the life isn't the notebook. Like you're not every conversation you have with your significant other is not going to be. If anything, they're probably going to be more like that. Like when you date someone or married to someone, uh, you're going to get in each other's skin. It's not like he said some like extremely graphic, horrific things. Uh, or like that's I I don't know. Like I don't know if she's in a relationship, but uh, listen, if any, yeah, I don't. I, I, I like, love. I love my wife very much. There are many things that she does that annoy me. This is just part of our our life, our existence. Yeah. This People is People are annoying. You're with anybody for any amount of time, you're going to find a number of things they do, probably a lot of things they do that are annoying. And listen, let's not pretend this doesn't happen the other way around either, okay? I yes. go out with my wife's wife's friends. They're like, "Ah, Rob, I heard you didn't stack the dishwasher properly." I'm like, ah, here we go again. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna hear about it because I didn't put, you know, I didn't load it to the. My wife talks more shit about me than I do about her. But at the end of the day, it does not affect our relationship. She's not a drag on my life. I, f I think she's very important, and I love her, and it doesn't make me not a decent person because there are some things about her that I don't like, and I might say them publicly. Like this is just egregious. Right. I'm sitting Listen, on a vacation. You know, back, I'm the on a story, lounge like, chair. I'm reading this. Back when I'm I like, used to play a lot of low stakes cash games, pregnant, like you were probably at a table with eight men, like eight men and you. And like when guys get together, what's one thing you do? You bitch about your significant other. You get it out. It's ex good. It's therapeutic. Exactly. Instead, you know, you say, oh, I can't believe I had to, you know, take the trash out in two degrees because uh, the bag was sitting there for a couple hours or something. Yeah, you, know, you get it. You get it out. But you were you were there not not to be like, oh, bro, you can only like it's it's fine. She was there. But you realize the the environment you're sitting in of like you're you're probably around a full table of dudes uh, who are, you know, at some point, uh, gonna gonna be bitching a little about their wives. 
listen, at, at some point in life, it's, it's not just even about your, your significant other. You, get, you wanna get things off your chest. Like when you're frustrated, sometimes you yeah. cannot say things directly to someone because the reaction you're gonna get. So you vent about it in other spots. I use this podcast as a way to vent sometimes yeah. about things. This is my platform. Sometimes it's gonna be about Simon Hunter. Sometimes it's gonna be about someone else. Sometimes it might be my wife that gets caught in the cross. It doesn't mean that I resent these people. Some cases I, I might, but like I, I, I had to include it. It is not betting related. I try to keep it to sports. I try to keep it to betting, but every now and then I see something that hits me the wrong way. And uh, this is, I, I mean, I, I don't like this. I, I, I simply do, I think this is a gross exaggeration of what happened on this guy's war zone stream. All right, let's keep it moving. Wade's bets, the old Wade. Wade's bets, uh, replying to, uh, to JB the Sharp. Interesting conversation here between JB the Sharp and Wade's bets. JB the Sharp wants to know who are the who's who in plus EV. <laughs> I feel like I need a mentor to navigate where to begin and what to look for. I can watch all the YouTube videos, read all the articles I want, but I still feel like I don't know what I'm doing here. Well, JB, I agree with that. I agree with JB. Uh, yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm concur. JB, <laughs> check us out on Circles Off, man. We got lots of educational videos. Just start from the beginning, roll right through. You'll figure it out. Anyways, Wade's Bets gives the quick response. Can I ask, why do you care so much for plus EV? Thousands of cappers don't care about plus EV and profit a crazy amount. Probably incorrect. Plus EV, more times than not, forces you to take 10, 15, 20 picks a day. That is completely unnecessary for massive profits. You know, you know, there's so many people out there, Kanish, that they're so certain they have this stuff figured out. I like know. It, so many. And this so guy, many. Wade, positive expected value does not force you to take 10, 15, 20 picks a day. You can bet whatever you want to bet. All all plus EV if it means did, you'd want to. Because exactly. if you actually have the expected value on that many picks, you'd want to bet them. <laughs> oh. No, no, like no, no. I've only I'm only gonna I've got uh value on twenty plays. I'm only gonna bet five because Wade told me I want massive profits. It's un it's unnecessary. Why would I bet all the ed with the edges I have when I could, you know, bet 10% of them. Or, or, or why, why even bet edges at all? I know thousands of so. cappers that they don't even bet edges. I was going to say. But they profit a just, crazy just, amount. Have Wade send me a link of his list, list of cappers. I don't have to worry about EV anymore. And I'm a, I'm a massive. <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know how this stuff just keeps on existing. Uh, 2,832 views there for uh, Wade's bets. Congratulations. Wade on that one. Uh, next one to our good friend, uh, George Riley Panagakis, uh, who, who we've now hit, we've now added to our soundboard. Uh, we got Are a few. You fucking kidding me? I lost 8,700. <laughs> oh, this is, the, this is the comeback player of the year. I, I remember, okay, now I'm with you. This is, uh... yeah, you don't know, you don't, you're not in on the GRP. GRP is like, he's all the talk nowadays. Oh, but no, I, I follow where like I caught, caught up on this because I, I had a big position on comeback player of the year and he had the whole market is cornered and everything. He cornered the market, uh, unfortunately, the, the wrong corner of the, <laughs> of the market, I would say. I uh, honestly feel bad that he lost, but the, the video that he did capture in real time. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> as soon as Flacco was announced uh, is too good. Uh, this tweet really bothered me uh, for one specific reason. December December 17th. Your life is different. <laughs> Bears are up 10 at the Cleveland. Bears are up 10 at Cleveland. Fourth and one at midfield with 10 minutes to go. Fields rolls out to the right, tries to run for just one yard, but a defender sticks out his arm and Fields goes down. If he makes this play, I believe my entire life is different <laughs> right now. I remember this play vividly because I had wagered on this game. Vividly remember this play. Do you know how many plays in my life I can say that if something else happened on that play, my life would be different, right? Like, this is sports betting. 
at, you could go through that Cleveland and Chicago game and you could find, like if, if this was such a high leverage game for you, you can find 20 things that happened in that game that, could, that were life-altering plays. As with anything, whenever you can win a big amount of money, this is, this is sports betting. Now, it sucks that he had to lose it. But Kanish, how many times have you watched a game where you have a lot of money and you're like, well, if they only didn't call that holding penalty on that third down, like, I'm looking great here. Like, this is sports. This is what we do. This is this is betting. Didn't he post, a, like, a notepad breakdown of what he had bet on this too, like, on the award itself? And, again, I, I know different amounts of money are different to different people, but... What did it, my entire life is different right now? If you had won like five thousand, like another wow. five thousand, you had ten thousand more dollars than you did an hour. I mean, so he's he's under the impress again. There's there's false assumptions built in here because he's under the impression that if if Cleveland doesn't win that game, Joe Flacco doesn't get the MVP, right? But Baker Mayfield does because if Baker Mayfield comeback player there. Oh, uh, sorry, not not MVP, comeback player there. Thank you, Zach. Because if Baker does, he wins like a couple hundred K. Yeah. He can buy himself a new car. But oh, so but, but no, there's an, no, no, another no. assumption built in here yeah. that, you know, Flacco doesn't win. It's going to Baker. It was DeMar. Didn't DeMar Hamlin finish second in the voting? I'm pretty sure he did. Yeah. <laughs> and a lot of national publicity would be <laughs> uh, I didn't even see that. I mean, the national public. Listen, it would be nice, um, but yeah, yeah. Demar, if that, if Flacco doesn't win, Demar or Hamlin would have like Mayfield. That when you looked at the voting, Mayfield wasn't even close. Yeah, it was. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I, li- I actually like GRP, but uh, that that one was uh, that was a multi- submitted multiple times, and I also noticed that. And uh, what are you gonna do? Life goes on. Life goes yeah, on, I'm George. We'll get him. Me. We'll get him next year, bud. <laughs> Okay, um, we can skip over the spank. We talked about the uh, customer service agents. Yeah, we can, yeah. we, we can skip this one. Oh, uh, uh, this, this, this was, got me. This was submitted actually to me as an image because apparently it has been deleted, um, which was posted and deleted by Stephen Golden uh, at GB Pickham. I think I've had interactions with this person before. I'll have to search. Um, when you see a line with minus 105 attached to it, I'd recommend waiting for a better line. When you see a minus 120 attached to a number, it's likely to become a worse number. Understanding timing matters with your numbers. Know when to bet now and know when to wait. Great advice, Kanish. Do you agree? I, I read this. I had to read this three times and like just in my head be like, what the fuck is this guy talking about? Like what? Could you have possibly gone through your head to think that to hit submit on this one and think that <laughs> it goes back to whatever, whatever Wade said, where like people are like, I got it all figured out, baby. Like what, what could you have pot? Like when you see a minus one Oh five, no wait, you don't want the you know, like just the principle of the first two sentences. But when you see that extra 15 cents minus minus one twenty. I think I kind of get where it's like if you see a three and a half minus one twenty, it might be moving to three or like the point he's trying to get to get it across. But it's so stupidly worded that like you could not make sense, and that might not even be maybe it doesn't. It, but like what, like there's not near enough context to make this make any sense. No, the first the first two sentences could are should just be deleted. And t- like yes. understanding timing matters with your numbers, absolutely. Know when to bet now and when to wait. Sure. That all matters. But like creating these dumb like blind rules in sports, I never understood these people. Like th- it's not it's not just this one from Steven. It's like the people that are like when you bet baseball, don't lay more than minus 160. Like, they just pick yes. some arbitrary yes. data point from the past 20 years where it's like, well, if you bet every team that's more than minus 160, you you lost money. It's like, guess what? I'm not betting every team. I'm betting one game where I think there's value on a team at minus 180. It's rules like this. It's like, just, just the number is the number. If you yep. have an edge on that number and you believe it's an edge, then 
if you believe it's an edge, it means the, the market's likely going to move towards your number. You might as well bet it. That's it. All right. Yep. Later, Stephen Golden. Next one. Oh, we got another Stephen Golden. Oh, yes. I, I, I recall this one as well. This one was sent to me. around. It, it, it exists. Uh, someone said, I can't find your past results anywhere. You might want to start with the results tab on the website. Could be a decent start. Well, Stephen, I saw this knows tweet. Those, those results tab. Let's check those, out this everybody results Everybody knows tab. those are legit. Well, I mean, I mean, I'm going through this results tab right now. Would, wouldn't you know it? Uh, NFL 2023-24 regular season up 53 units. Had the playoffs up 14. Uh, college football, great season. Uh, NBA, wow, plus 29 units. College basketball, they're up there too. WNBA winning. Uh, MLB winning. NHL up 15 units. Why don't we go Guys back to fire. past years? Well, I mean, he, I, I'm, I'm still scrolling. And I'm not I don't seeing, see a losing year. Yeah, I, I also don't see uh, any plays associated with these, but I just see res- lists of results. That's, oh, that's not important when you're up that many units, baby. Oh, MLB 2021, minus 11 units. Oh. Uh, he's smart enough to, to sprinkle something in, yeah. in there. Well, Lost then. MLB 2019, too. Wow, look at this. Wow. Maybe MLB is yep. just not a sport. Yeah. Maybe that was uh, the year Zalbert lost, too, Matt Zalbert, but it was a different <laughs> game. It was a different game that year, so we got to take it off the record. Listen. This is a joke. This is what I'm getting at. A, a results tab? Are you kidding me? Like, I can't find your past results anywhere. You direct them to the results tab of the website. That is just a list of a cumulative results. Get out, like, get out of life. Anyone, this is not particular to Steven. Exact, a, anyone who ever sends you to a site that looks like this, where it's just results listed, no plays, no verification, any, no like I posted on PickWatch and on BetStamp and on whatever and on whatever. It's just this, not even a Google sheet. It's just results. Avoid them. I'm not saying that they're guaranteed to be a loser. Just avoid them though. Like it doesn't matter. You can't, this is not proving anything to you. Final one. All right. Our friend, Matt Zalbert. This very combination right here. Bananas and marinara sauce <laughs> with the very nice emoji. You trust this, this line, but you trust me with my over unders and documented track record of accuracy. You can trust me for rare food advice as well. This is delightful. Wow. Caps locked. Let's say, let's see this full image, Zach, right here of this banana dipped in this marinara sauce. Listen. I've been, I'm, I'm a judgmental person. I've tried to, to get better at this over the course of my life. I don't want to judge. You know, we, we know about, we know in life there are specific combinations that work. Peanut butter and, and, and jelly, right? Bread and butter, coffee and cream, fish and chips. Uh, spread investor and going broke and using people's money to pay his, his debts when he runs pools. Wine and cheese. Uh, spread investor and copying Ken Barkley's overnight plays. Uh, you know, all sorts of great combinations. Could we have possibly uncovered one in banana and sauce? And marinara. <laughs> Marinara sauce. Uh, I have a banana here. I, I, I had to. I had to go to a local grocery store. It's not. I don't want people to call me out here. It's. It's not the ripest of bananas. Still a little green, but uh, mostly yellow. Where'd you pick up your marinara? Uh, a little uh, at the local Kroger, baby. A little. Uh, a little. Uh, you know. Uh, I don't even know. Remember what brand it was. Yep. I, I, think uh, it was, I, I think it was the Kroger brand. I got the cheapest one. I ordered some pizzaiolo for lunch today, a couple okay. of slices, and uh, with some uh, marinara sauce as well. Uh, I'm going to crack, crack this baby open. Got a fresh crack there as well. So yeah. what, what's the deal here? Do we just, we just dip in it or we try to scoop? What do you think is going to work best? Um, I mean, he's got a lot on that banana in that picture. <laughs> <laughs> like I, I that was I mean that it's a striking amount of sauce he's going with there in that I don't know if I'm gonna go to that level with this I I think I'm gonna go to, he's got the scoop working though all right well let's 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 do it uh, I'll get my dip prepared 
This banana is going to break, though. Like, that's the problem with the banana as a vessel. It doesn't, like, hold up to... Uh, I'm going rip to rip off a piece of banana here. This is... I haven't... You know, I didn't think, of, think this through all that much. Banana, marinara, let's do it. Cheers. 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 Mmm. 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 <laughs> I can't believe it. I'm in. His face. <laughs> you know, I thought this was going to be bad. wrong with this guy? I thought this was going to be bad. Uh-oh. You're, uh, are you on board? <laughs> no, no. Wait, what I was going to say is about this is about 10, 10 to 15 times worse than I thought it would be. This is <laughs> fucking disgusting. Yeah, I, I don't. It's it it, it it is the like flavors that shouldn't go together ever. No, no, the tomato base with the bananas like the worst. Yeah, no. H humans have been eating food for for thousands of years. I think if if this worked, you know, Chef Bobby yeah. Flay would have found it already. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. You know, whatever, Mike, Chef Michael Simon, these Iron Chefs, they would have figured it out. Nobody's figured out the banana marinara combo yet because it's fucking disgusting. Is why. Can I give that a try? Yeah, go for it. Here, here's, here's some leftover banana. Yeah, yeah, yeah now that yeah, exactly. I, come around here, yeah. Just, just. Get I this, can't, I know. can't believe how much he's got on that fucking banana. Like yeah. he, like dunked half the. Yeah, Zach's gonna give it a go here. I'm just gonna eat the rest of this banana. Is actually good. Yeah, I was gonna say yeah, the banana, the banana itself. Banana. Uh, yeah, the... it's gross, man. I have a bad taste in my mouth now. I, I like I don't like marinara sauce to begin with. It's like a bit like I'm Italian, right? Marinara is not kind of like a slap in the face to good tomato sauce, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. Anyways, I, we could say we tried it now, and and Matt Zalbert is certified. It's, it's crazy like everything insane. else Zalbert does. You gotta fade it. You gotta. It's not good. <laughs> And if someone tries to tell me it's because this banana wasn't ripened, this is a damn good banana I'm eating right now. Like this, this is, like, it's not 10 out of 10. I'm going to eat this whole banana. This is a, this is at least an 8 out of 10 tasty yeah. banana. Uh, oh. That sauce, man, that, that rattled me hard. I don't even know how to do the rest of the show now. Oh, my God. All I have to drink here, I finished my water. All I have left is coffee, and it's a pistachio yeah. latte. Imagine following up that... I'm going to have to. <laughs> Banana marinara. Banana marinara pistachio latte. What a dream. All right. That concludes tweets that trigger us. Uh, before we get into our closing questions here, you may have noticed new addition to the studio here. This is a uh, framed Chromax golf ball. That is from when I defeated Rufus Peabody in one-on-one oh. -on -one oh. mini golf. It has been fun. Like, did, did you send it off for, for uh, or did you just put, buy one of those and put it in? No, no, that's that's the ball I used. That's what I'm won. saying. That's what I'm. I didn't know if you like sent it off to get like uh, you know like officially com commemorized in the one of those things. Are you but but? I still have the two losing balls as well, but those okay. will never see the light of day. I, 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 I was got... able to get it. I was backing you that that day. Uh, I was able. I remember. I was. I had, I had a good chunk. Uh, on 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 me that day. Yeah. Yeah. I oh, yeah. That was when we did the stream together. Kenny. Good chunk in terms of putt putt. Like I mean, not <laughs> like in yeah. terms of being able to get down on a putt putt uh, between two, uh, you know, uh, two two people I know. Well, I will say this: we got the World Putting League Survivor Series coming up. Two events: February twenty sixth, which is next Monday, and March fourth. Both of them at one p.m. Eastern time. The finals is on April second. The way that this thing is going to work with the pros is they got two groups of six. They're going to play. The winners of those groups go on to the finals, and two wild cards, the next two best scores, go on to the finals as well. So set okay. your calendars. First one is on Monday, February 26, 1 p.m. You can check those over on the Hammer HQ on YouTube uh, or on the theworldputtingleague.com. So that's back in business, and that is going to be permanently stored in the studio now as an ode to uh, my fantastic putting skills um you got a plus ev or minus ev move of the week kanish move of the week yeah plus e you ever you don't listen to the podcast anymore or what plus ev minus ev we do this every week it's a regular staple on the show 
He's looking for a play right now. He's looking for a bet. Uh, I got, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Anything on. real life? I'm not. What was life life advice. Is uh, is this? Are we actually getting this out there tomorrow, this? 4 p.m.? You don't have to give a pick. It could be any advice. Oh! And, <laughs> I'm not telling you to give out a, a random pick oh, on the show. I, I was looking on some overnights to see what I bet for, uh, to see what's in there. for. No, the I, I, I appreciate the support that you've been giving us for Circles Off. I'll, I'll repay that on Hit the yeah. Books this year. <laughs> Plus, plus EV move of the week. I didn't. Did you, did you just put that in? I, I tell you, plus EV move of the week is uh, you know, maybe maybe two X in the podcast speed of uh, you know, and and missing a few things there. So uh, <laughs> yeah, no plus EV uh, move. Let me hear yours first, then I'll get I'll give you one. Okay, I got a couple. Mine is EV move of the week. I just figured it out. I was gonna do something else, but it's this whatever this banana marinara. Yeah, yeah, can yeah. Come. Don't do stupid shit with food. Like honestly speaking. You didn't figure something, you didn't reinvent, like people are trying these crazy things nowadays for attention. I mean, Zalbert forgot me to eat a fucking banana with marinara yeah, sauce. Yep. Don't do stupid shit like that. Another move of the week. I guess it could be plus EV or minus EV. Depends on which way you want to look at it. I'm recently on vacation in Jamaica. Uh, I like to take a trip to the uh, the lobby washroom every day. You know, I, I have my coffee, things brew. I don't want to do that in my room, you know, with yep. the, the, you know, you know how in my own, in my home, I have my own washroom that I use for my business. I like to use the lobby washroom. Now, the thing about some of these resort washrooms is they're not like regular stalls, public stalls. They're like their own room. Your stall, like it's a door. You open it in, you go in. Yeah. It's, it's yeah, nice. Yeah, yeah. So I'm in the lobby washroom and um, I, I don't have to, you know, I'm just, I just got to pee that morning and I'm taking a leak. And uh, all of a sudden, one of the stall doors behind behind me opens up, and uh, you know I'm still leaking, but I can hear some feet shuffling, and I just turn over my right shoulder and I see a guy uh, waddling, bare assed, pants around his his knees, <laughs> into the stall next to him, uh, and he goes in and locks the door there. Now I don't know what happened, but I can only presume one thing happened, and this is a grave mistake. If you're going to use a public washroom. The first thing you do when you go in is check that there's toilet paper. Always the uh, first move. You can do this by first using the toilet paper to create a little uh, bird's nest on the toilet seat, which I like to do. I'm not a fan of, of my ass touching, you know, the ass of, of where someone else has been. So I do the, like the little bird's nest of toilet paper. And that way, you know, there's toilet paper there. And that way you don't have to waddle over bare assed to another stall. Because this guy probably sat there, like sweating. He knows he got no toilet paper. He just took yep. his shit. Yeah, he's he's there and he's like, "Do I yell out? Do I wait till I think the washroom's empty?" Which he presumably did. I was very quiet. Yeah. I was the only person yeah. in there. He thought it was empty. He opened the door. He realized it wasn't. But he also probably had the inner debate of, "Do I pull my shorts up, and like risk, you know, getting like." shit on my swimsuit or whatever right, he was wearing, right. or do I just go over bare ass? You don't want to get yourself in these situations. So public restrooms, first and foremost, before you close that door, just do a quick check, make sure there's toilet paper. If you're planning on uh, on a number two, because you could get yourself into some, some really bad situations if you don't. So that's uh, some of my advice of the week. I'm not giving out overnight bets like, like Kanisha's. <laughs> No, I was gonna say. Listen, I was gonna. It had me on a couple of uh, of NBA stuff here that uh, you know I'm, I'm looking at the screen and say, let's we'll go plus EV life move of the week. Do you guys have tropical smoothies place in Canada? Would we say that like, uh, like booster juice? Boost, yeah, guess? booster juice yeah. would be the closest. I would say yes. Okay, they came out with these new bowls like. Legit, like the whole, I gotta call the what they're called, like acai. I see what actually they're called. Acai. Tropical smoothie, and and, so, and they're they're everywhere in the U.S. Like legitimately everywhere. So this isn't like a Michigan thing. They're all over the place. These tropic bowls. <laughs> I am telling you, they got a couple of different. Like they got like a mixed berry. They got a chia oatmeal. These bowls are in. Incredible, Incre and I don't think the food at Tropical Smoothie overall is like the greatest. But I am telling, 
Yeah, I don't know if you can see it, but like, if you just go to Tropical Smoothie, try our new Tropic Bowl. Uh, but like, are you? What were you getting paid in perpetuity from these guys? <laughs> I tell you like, what, this is the best advertisement these guys you, ever I don't, got. I don't. If Tropical Smoothie wants to sponsor, hit the books and just pay us in free Tropical Smoothie Bowls all year, I will eat one alive for every show this season. They are incredible. I've gotten them all, since they came out. I've gotten like four to five a week. Uh, since in like the last couple of weeks, so huge plus EV move. Love them. Maybe a future sponsor of Hit the Books if uh, if, if I if you know the, the Jesus loves me because uh, I, I would love nothing more than uh, some some free bowls. What if they release a, a banana marinara smoothie? <laughs> well, then then hey, hey, I mean, as long as I'm getting uh, the free, yeah. If they can make Zilba, if they want to go the Zilbo route and sponsor whatever he's doing, then that. If they want to go the the right route, uh, get it, get on, uh, hit the books or circles off, and uh, you know, get us some bowls here. There we go, Zach. You got something for this week? Um. No, actually, I don't. Okay. I don't have anything right now. Not what a no. fantastic end to this week's <laughs> sorry. episode. Sorry, yeah, sorry. First, we have Kanish <laughs> doesn't, even, doesn't even know we do this segment, even <laughs> though we've been doing it since, like, I don't know, six months ago. And, uh, yeah, you know what? That's going to do it. I don't know what to tell you. That's going to do it for Circles Off episode number 142. If you think a banana and marinara is fucking disgusting, smash that like button down below. Also, leave some comments with what other disgusting stuff because we'll try anything on this show for views. That's is what my life has become at this point. And of course, if you're in Canada, make sure you check out Pinnacle Sportsbook. Use code HAMMER to sign up. One of the best sports books in business. 25 years, established book. They give you limits. They treat you with respect. They're not banning you and kicking you out. Bet whatever you want at Pinnacle Sportsbook. Once again, reminder. For Monday, 1 p.m. Eastern Time, it's the World Putting League at the Hammer HQ and the World Putting League.com. For myself, Rob Pizzola, for our guest today, Joey Kanish, for Zach Phillips, who's running the show as usual. This has been Circles Off episode number 142. Make sure you're subbed here on the Circles Off YouTube channel, and we'll catch everyone again next week. Peace out.